18% allocation to central bank holdings if we believe those numbers. The writing is on the wall. Gold and silver are replacing many traditional assets along with other commodities too. As old Tam Pozar says, this is about real commodities. No longer promises from countries that are bankrupt morally, socially, and actually. And I think that that, that portrays for much higher prices in gold and silver, even than Bank of America or JP Morgan optimistically are telling us. JP Morgan has recently set a target price of $34 per ounce for silver by 2025, marking a significant bullish stance on precious metals. This outlook, presented by Andy Schechtman during an interview, underscores the bank's view that the recent pullback in silver prices offers a prime buying opportunity. With a focus on both gold and silver, J.P. Morgan's analysis suggests that these commodities are poised for substantial gains in the face of ongoing economic turbulence. The United States is grappling with a rapidly expanding national debt and massive unfunded liabilities, which Schechtman argues will inevitably lead to a devaluation of the dollar. As the national debt has surged by $11.5 trillion since 2020, the fiscal outlook appears increasingly unsustainable. Schechtman predicts that the country will be forced to rely on printing more money or monetizing bonds to meet its obligations, further eroding the dollar's value and driving up the prices of gold and silver. Globally, there is a noticeable trend of de-dollarization as countries seek alternatives to the U.S. dollar and treasury securities. This shift is driven by concerns over inflation, default risks, and potential confiscation of assets. Sheckman highlights that gold has outperformed U.S. Treasuries over the past two decades, making it an attractive option for countries and investors looking to mitigate these risks. As a result, the demand for commodities like gold and silver is expected to continue rising. Now we'll show you the best clips of latest interview, but first smash the subscribe button, turn on notifications, and share this video with a silver bug as more people need to know. Enjoy the episode. I think, yeah, ultimately, those are our numbers that I think are certainly realistic and, and maybe a whole hell of a lot higher. I guess I'll say this. There are very few absolutes that you can talk about in finance. And I've learned in 34 years, maybe the only absolute I can give you is that bull markets go higher than anyone thinks possible. Look at the Dow. I st When I started, it was 2100. <clears throat> and, and bear markets will fall further than anyone ever thinks possible. And I would look at the Nikkei, which was 40,000 in 1990, or pretty damn close to it. And it's just now getting back to where it was. I know it bettered it for a moment recently, but it's taken 34 years to do that. And it's still just barely there, if not just below it, at a period of time where interest rates in Japan have been zero bound forever. So even with 0% interest, you can't entice the public who was burned so badly to go back in to the Nikkei. And so I think when we look at gold and silver in in the scheme of things, this is a, I think, a, a massive shift, uh, a, a once in a generation shift away from the dollar. And so, yeah, sky's the limit, I guess, but it won't be easy and it won't be smooth and it won't be just straight up because of the obvious ramifications of all of this. So you got the West hanging on, doing all they can to um, shake people from the bull. Bull wants to take as few people along for the ride as possible. But when you realize that, you know, gold right now has replaced the euro in terms of the second largest asset held by central banks right now for the first time ever, it, 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 18% allocation to central bank holdings, if we believe those numbers, the writing is on the wall. Gold and silver are replacing many traditional assets along with other commodities too. As old Tam Pozer says, this is about real commodities. No longer promises from countries that are bankrupt morally, socially, and actually. And I think that that, that portrays for much higher prices in gold and silver, even than Bank of America or JP Morgan optimistically are telling us. Distorted. And, you know, remember, they told us originally there was no inflation, and then it was transitory. And well, they told us there'd be four rate hikes or, or decreases, rather, for sure, the beginning of the year, and now maybe one. And if they do that one towards the end of the year, it just reeks of, of it being politicized. 
to get the keep the Democrats in office to get that run up of the market prior to the election. But yeah, I think those days are long over. Like I was saying earlier, how do you pay these unfunded liabilities? Where does the money come from? You're creating a trillion dollars in debt every single month. How is inflation over at only at three percent? Where is it hold up? Is it all in the equity markets? Is it in the, the the treasury market? Where is it? And when it finally starts to rear its head in the real economy, it's impossible to say that inflation will get down to 2%. I can't believe it. I don't think if you go back and, and look at their numbers over the last 30 years, they've been at 2% more than once or twice. Most of the time, they're over 2%, even by their own flawed metrics. But yeah, I would agree. Zoltan Pozar is a genius. And yeah, I don't think that we get inflation anywhere near 2%. And if they were really honest with their inflation numbers, it would be a whole hell of a lot higher. So if they do pivot and lower rates, it only reignites that inflation engine that is already higher than 3% for what they're trying to get us to believe. In today's news recap, silver's bullish break under threat with aggressive sellers parked above. Silver teetering above support zone. It could be an important day for silver, threatening to break the uptrend that kicked off the bullish run back in February. Given its importance, it comes across as an ideal level to build a trade around, regardless of how the price action evolves from here. For now, you can see silver is resting on uptrend support, having pushed below it earlier today. The reversal possibly reflecting the proximity of the 50-day moving average, which acted as support earlier in June. Sell the break should the price break and close below the uptrend and 50-day moving average. You could sell with stop loss above the trend line for protection or buy the bounce. Should uptrend support hold, you could buy with a stop loss below either the uptrend or 50-day moving average, depending on your risk tolerance and trade target. The first upside target would be the top of the bull flag currently found at $30, $50. If that were to give way, $38.57, 31,548 and May highs above 30 tower 50 would be the next levels to watch. Key event risk looms. As for key drivers in the days ahead, it's hard to go past the U.S. core PCE deflator on Friday, given the implications for the Fed rate outlook and U.S. dollar. From a fundamental perspective, silver and other non-interest bearing assets would normally benefit from a weaker greenback and lower U.S. borrowing costs, creating tailwinds from a FX perspective and reducing the opportunity cost of holding long silver positions. Now we'll show you the best clips of the latest interviewer, but first, smash the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily recaps. Enjoy the episode. And unfunded liabilities. The national debt is up eleven and a half trillion since 2020, and this is this is a country that that is has its fiscal house not in order. And when you look at the unfunded liabilities, who's going to pay for them? And you know, when the Congressional Budget Office says in in six years, one hundred percent of tax revenue goes just to pay mandatory entitlement and interest on the debt only. When you realize military spending is discretional, you you who's gonna who's gonna fund our military? So we have a situation that is un you know it's just it's it's not we can't continue down this path. Put it to you that way. And so I, I would just simply say that ultimately, gold and silver go higher in the face of a dollar that falls. And I don't know if it's gold and silver going higher as much as what J.P. Morgan is saying is that the dollar has to fall. And that's really what I, I think ultimately will happen. Now, when you look at what's happening around the globe, the de-dollarization, the de-treasurization, a growing union of countries, as we've talked about forever. And de only de-treasurization. Is that a new de one? De-treasurization. Yes. Well, I mean, that's what they're doing there. Why would anyone want to hold treasuries? You look at, at gold, it, it's up 9.9% on average for, for 25 years. That's doubled the value, the pace of the 10-year treasury. And and we've proven to the world that we don't like what you're doing. We'll we'll take your your treasuries and may might even give them to the country, or, or or buy weapons with the proceeds and give to the country you're in a war with. That's a very tough thing to come back from. So I think ultimately it leads to more of the same. Uh, countries seeking alternatives to the dollar, seeking alternatives to the treasury. Read Zoltan Pozar. This is Bretton Woods three, all about commodities. 
And, and it's also a, a country that has obligations that will be very difficult to, to meet just from tax revenue. So where are your options, you know? Raise taxes, print money, um, or, and and selling treasuries in an environment where there's only $8 trillion in treasury holdings that are foreign held. The majority of it is owed to us. Foreigners are not really keen. Now, there are some countries, if we are to believe that UK and Ireland and Cayman Islands are keen on holding our treasury debt, but the ones that have been responsible for funding our spending binge, binge seem to be moving in another direction. So yeah, ultimately, I think those numbers might even prove to be low. Ultimately, gold and silver go higher in the face of obligations by this country that can really probably only be met through printing of money or monetization of bonds. Same thing, because just no one wants to hold our treasuries because of inflation risk, default risk, and outright confiscation risk. And I think that's really where 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 it is in in its simplest of terms so yeah you know i don't think we've seen anything yet i guess is the bottom line and and i'm happy with those those numbers but i would i would think that they could actually be much higher india is an example uh, of what's really happening they bought one and a half times the amount of gold in the first four months than they did in the entire year last year but they repatriated 100 metric tons from the bank of england which by proxy is the London Bullion Metals Exchange and all of these countries in Africa, including um, Saudi Arabia and Egypt, have repatriated their gold from the New York Fed, i.e. the COMEX. So it's not only the, the accumulation by the most well-informed traders, it's also the repatriation, the removal of counterparty risk. And that's a lot, I think, what Zoltan Pozar is talking about. That's why it's commodities. We've, we've broken trust. And I think that's that's the most important thing. When the central banks say we're going to keep buying, sure, I would argue that the numbers that we all are led to believe are are way underreported. The IMF says that. The analysts at Bank of Montreal says that. And everyone has said that about China in particular for years, going back as far as I can remember. So I would simply say that there is no reason for gold to have been reclassified tier one. And when you see other than that it's significant in terms of where it's going and when i say gold silver is part of gold and as one goes so too will the other ultimately for different reasons now but they're not going one's not going to the heaven without heavens without the other one coming with but i think when you see the repatriation it speaks volumes it's about the loss of trust this is what it's all about the loss of trust and can you put humpty dumpty back together don't know the trust is something that I think is very difficult to get back once you break it in any form of life, whether it be relationships or in this case, you know, the world reserve status or the center of, of free trade. People look at this country differently now um, in many ways. And I think, you know, maybe the most important way is, is the risk of having um, assets in, in treasuries as savings. Instead, they're looking at commodities, which um, I think have no counterparty risk and and the relevance of how important they are moving forward. I think Zoltan nailed it. So yeah, it doesn't surprise me the central banks say that. And I would argue that they're buying way more than they're telling us and, and producing more than they're telling us. So, you know, tell us just enough to keep us interested. But if we really knew how much the Chinese were buying or any of these countries, the price would go parabolic. And it's in all of their best interest during the accumulation phase to be tight-lipped about that and, and not be genuine doesn't do them any good to do that. What do you think of Andy's point? Is the East taking over the metals? Will the U.S. dollar officially be replaced by the BRICS nations? Post in the comment section down below your honest opinion on the complex situation we're going on. And watch this video right here because you'll love it. I see you on the other side.